All right, guys, uh, we got a good show every day. We have Chris Morgan. He committed to uh, North Texas for basketball. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. No problem. Hey, so we always start out with a few would you rathers to get right into it. Um, so for the first one, would you rather reverse one decision you make every day or be able to stop time for 10 seconds every day? Mm. Be able to stop time. Why? Uh, just to, like catch the moment of things, you know, like it's some exciting things that happens in everybody's lives. And I just feel like if you were able to just stop time and then just like be in that moment once again, like, yeah, I, that'd just be awesome. Yeah, I feel the same way. That would be awesome for a few of those moments. Um, this one, next one, um, would you rather win $50,000 or only your best friend win 500000 Uh Me and my best friend, uh, I'm a sharing type of guy. So, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, I feel like, and you'll get more money, you know, 250000 yeah. split right down the middle, over yeah. 50000 and then we both can succeed. Yeah, that's a smart answer there. All right, um, final one. Would you rather run 100 miles per hour or fly at 10? That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. I have to say fly. That'd be sick. I'd be like a superhero, I feel like, if I was yeah, no, it's Flying. That's it's awesome right there, man. Flying. Yeah. It would be, it would be a good time. Um, so a lot of people help me with the show, like myself, we're all D1 athletes. Um, you know, everyone comes from different parts of the, you know, the country and stuff. My, uh, family, they're from Texas, you know, uh, my cousin, she's a very good basketball player for the state of Texas. Um, what's it like playing there high school basketball for you when you did that? Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it was kind of tough, like, especially once, I got to my senior year and people started realizing who I was and how good I was. I mean, people were coming in my head every game. I mean, yeah. it was like, honestly, I feel like Texas is a standard. Like in Texas, like it's all defense being played on all levels. Like nobody's just gonna just to come dominate Texas, especially from another state. I mean, Texas really, we just really dogs. Like it's hard to explain. Like you gotta be made in Texas to understand like, how much of a dog fight and how much of a battle it is every game. No, yeah, for sure. That's why I asked because I was like, you know, I went down because I live in Ohio and I went down and watched and it was just like, it was like, you know, so there's certain players that are great, obviously, in every state, but overall the level of competition in Texas was just something I hadn't seen, you know, and that's why I was wondering, you know, your team, you had them back-to-back postseason births. Um, you guys were top 25 nationally, you know, five times. How hard was it, you know, you know, keep that standard of excellence and, you know, compete day in and day out without many letting downs? Uh, it really just started in practice, honestly. I mean, in practice, we used to go at it. I'm talking about, like, some practices, there'll be fights. Uh, but we're always brothers, so we always know that, I mean, we got to fight together in the game. So it was just a lot of competing. And it was trying to say our mentally-wise, we had to stay, like, mentally strong because – a lot of you will hear talks all around saying, oh, y'all aren't supposed to be together. That's cheating or something like that. Yeah. Or, it was just a lot of talk and crazy people like just saying stuff. So honestly, I mean, it was a fun ride. I'm not going to lie. It was it was different. I mean, that was like fun times, but it yeah. was great while it lasted. Yeah, people always want to hate on you when you're at your top. You know, I was interested to hear, you know, with everything like shut down, you know, a little over a year ago, how do what'd you do during that time? And how'd you like, what were the big things? Was a weight room or were you getting shots up at like an empty park? What were you doing? Uh, so basically before quarantine, I was 190 pounds. Yeah. And I used to get thrown around in the game all the time. So when quarantine hit, I was like, man, I got to get some weight. So I got on this uh, meal plan. I was eating like six times a day. I was lifting. I was trying to stay in shape. And like, once we started playing again, I got up to 235. And I mean, jeez, I mean, yeah. I feel great. Yeah, big big thing you have to say is in weight room. You know, you visit, you saw your campus virtually, um, like most of the 21 recruiting class. You know, your dad, he went to the school, uh, UNT. What was, how do you like make that decision, you know, to go there? Uh, so basically, Along with my dad going there, going here, I mean, 
the coach from uh, he used to coach at uh, Baylor, Coach McClaskey. Yeah. He used to coach at Baylor, and he coached my brother actually. And he recruited my brother. Yeah. And he used they when back when it wasn't quarantine, you know, uh, they used to come to my house all the time trying to get my brother to go there. And eventually he did. He did uh, go play for him. So that was a big thing. And then our head assistant, he coached my other brother when he was at a junior college. So, yeah, I mean, it's just a whole lot of uh, just a whole lot of relationships going on. And honestly, I just feel like they fit the, my playing style. I mean, I'm a big defensive and rebounding guy. So, I mean, and we like I mean, every practice we're going at it. So big defensive guy. So that's yeah. a big key too. Yeah, when you were looking at, like, you know, the schools, right? So was it, like, you were you watching a lot of tape of the teams and, you know, seeing how you'd fit, or what was that like? Uh, that's exactly what I was doing. Because uh, at first, I really didn't even think I was going to commit that early. But once uh, I seen how they played and then just watching them throughout the year, I was like, oh, yeah, this is this is definitely the spot. I can definitely see me playing in a mean green jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, when before when you got your first offer, where was it at? What were you doing? That's always, you know, some interesting story. Uh, this is crazy. Uh, okay, so I was at my aunt's house, and we were on the way to go get some chicken, some fried chicken. Yeah. And I was inside the store in the restroom, using the restroom, and uh, Coach Mayor from Morgan State, he had called me, and he told me, uh, he offered me, basically. Yeah. And, I mean, from there, it just went up, like, I started getting calls from coaches from all over the United States. Yeah, so, you know, North Texas obviously is one of those mid-major, you know, schools everyone knows about. They're always making headlines in March Madness and everything, winning Conference USA. You know, how what are you guys working on right now so, you know, keep that level of success from last year? Uh, right now we're getting strong. Uh, we're in the weight room four times a week uh, in – off to the side, I mean, different players, like especially me, I go to the weight room really six times a week. Only days I don't go is Sundays. And just, you know, skill stuff, just getting prepared. Uh, right now, it's not it's not too, like, we're not too, uh, we're not pricing that hard. But, I mean, prices are still hard. I mean, we're competing. And once uh, August comes, I believe that we're going to start pricing, pricing, like, yeah. And Probably there, everybody were working on things, learning plays, going over defensive uh, strategies and all. Yeah, you know, from, you know, high school to college is obviously a huge difference in the level of play. What's, like, your biggest expectation of when you hit the floor of what's, you know, going to come when you're out there? Uh, basically, uh, getting lower. I mean, high school, I'm not going to say it was just easy, but yeah. – I was one of the big guys, so and it wasn't that many people my size. So yeah. now playing against my well, especially my teammates, they're huge too. So right now I'm just trying to stay low and stay tight and be strong with the ball so I can uh, be able to finish and go by people. Yeah. Obviously your dad was a former player, but like growing up, was there like an NBA player or somebody? Growing up for me, I was a big Allen Iverson fan. Um, I don't know if there's anyone for you. Uh, LeBron James. I mean, I don't base my game off of him, but just what he does is just, I mean, it's immaculate. Like, it's unbelievable. I mean, unfortunately, we weren't able to get it done this year, you know, yeah. due to injuries. But now I number six, you'll see yeah. next year. The change yeah. of number six. Yeah, I mean, hey, bringing it back that heat, you know. We'll, we'll see know. if it happens. It might work. Um, you know, when you were, like, growing up, was it always basketball for you, or were you playing other sports? Uh. It was always basketball, but I did play other sports. I played football. Uh, I used to play soccer. Yeah. I ran a little track. And, I mean, that was really it. But I used to play, just for fun, I used to play baseball with some of my neighborhood friends, yeah. kickball. Uh, what else we used to do? We used to do a lot of running, uh, bike races, a whole bunch yeah. of stuff. Man. Just trying to stay active. Always got to do something, man. Yes, sir. Okay, you know, final uh, couple questions. Uh, what was your favorite basketball memory you ever had? It could be on the you know park with your friends. Could be you know high school. What was it? Uh, so this is crazy. My when I was eight years old, I was playing in this rec league, and, and we, the score was <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. The score was twenty two twenty two, and I had hit a buzzer beater, my first buzzer beater ever, my first three pointer ever in game. Uh, it was from the right side three on the wing. 
Now I remember just it was an inbounds play. They just threw it over the top. I caught it and I shot it and I hit it off the glass. So I mean, I'll never forget that moment. It was just an awesome moment. Yeah, I swear some of those old memories when you're like a little kid and you're playing. I mean, there are a few of them for me. It's that you can't beat them, honestly, man. Yeah. Because the guy you started. Okay, you know, final couple questions. Uh, we always do this one um, because you know, a lot of people who watch this happen to be athletes. Um, you know, what's the best piece of advice you've ever heard from someone on your journey? Uh, just to basically keep my knowledge cup empty. Like, you never know how much you can learn from just playing any sport, you know. Uh, like, I heard it from LeBron also. You know, he says every day he goes into practice, he learns something new. So he doesn't go into practice with a full cup of knowledge. You know, he tries to keep it empty so he can obtain so much knowledge about the game because it's so much to learn and so many people know things that what you know is not enough like you can always learn something about the game so just try to keep your knowledge cup empty and uh don't try to don't listen to outsiders you know uh try to stay focused on a team's goal if you're a team sport now if you're a, a single player sport like golf or tennis you know i mean you can still listen to the coaches but especially in a team score like I'm in a team sport. Yeah. Do not, do not, do not, do not. I repeat, do not listen to outsiders. Like focus yeah. on the team goal and you'll win. Yeah. I promise you. Yeah, that's uh, awesome to hear there. Um, final qu final one, we always finish it out. Uh, when your basketball career is over, down the line, how do you want people to remember yourself? Uh, I want to be a Hall of Famer. You know, one of the top rebounders ever. Uh, like even better than Dennis Rodman, but kind of a Dennis Rodman that can score too, you know. Uh, one of the best rim runners, being able to run the floor, dunks, all that. Like, yeah, it's just an inspiration to kids to just keep playing basketball and don't let the sport die. Yeah, well, Chris, I appreciate you coming on, man. It means a lot, you know, getting to help out and give people like yourself a voice. So it means a lot to us. Uh, no problem.